Hello, welcome back. This is part seven of chapter four, where we're talking about molecules and compounds. In this section, we're changing gears a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna define what molar mass is. We know what atomic mass is, right? We're gonna define molar mass of a compound, and then we're gonna calculate mass percent. Um, as we proceed, and this is like the next to last one, I think, we're going to also look at stoichiometry of um, the, these materials as they react with certain things. So molecular mass is basically the mass of the formula unit, okay, or the individual molecule. And so it is the mass of one mole of the compound. So we know that the atomic mass, that, that number with the decimal places, you know, that you see on the periodic table, okay, that number is the atomic mass. What we do to, do, to get the molecular mass or molar mass is we take the sum of all of the um, atoms and add them all together, and then we come up with the total. So, for example, when you have water, you have two hydrogens, and so they are 1.01 AMUs, and I got that from this same place except for hydrogen, um, plus 16, which is the atomic mass of oxygen, and that gives me 18.02 AMUs. One mole of water has a molecular mass of the same magnitude, but it's now in grams. So it's 18.02 grams. So I can use that same number to figure out what the molecular mass of the compound is. So let's do one. Always the best way. All right, and I'll show you how I do it. And I try to do it like organized, right? So I have a molecule that is C6H12. O6. If you've ever had biology, you're probably familiar with glucose. So I need to know what the formula mass, so you're going to see formula weight, formula mass, molecular mass, molecular weight. All of those things are the same thing, okay? It's just the atomic mass in grams. So I'm going to line these up. I've got carbons, I've got hydrogens, and I've got oxygens. So I have six carbons, I have 12 hydrogens, and I have six oxygens. So I'm, I now know how many of each thing I have, so I'm going to multiply that by the atomic mass. Okay, now if you want to use the all of the decimal places you can, usually just to kind of save time, I just use the rounded ones, okay? So six times 12 is going to give us the carb the the grams of carbon. 12 times 1 is going to give us the grams of hydrogen and 6 times 16 is going to give us the grams of oxygen. So 6 times 12 is 72 and 12 times 1 is 12 and 16 times 6 is 96. So I add those together and I get 180 grams per mole of glucose. It's as simple as that. All you have to remember is where does this number come from? Okay, remember that it's that number with the decimal places with the elements on the periodic table. All right easy as that and you can calculate the formula weight formula mass molecular weight molecular mass what whatever we're calling it okay technically the formula word goes with the ionic compounds molecular goes with the um, covalent molecules but we use them interchangeably quite honestly and then you have one that you're going to do calcium nitrate and you're going to have to first figure out what the formula is and then you're going to calculate grams per mole of calcium nitrate. So when you use molar mass and you use it in combination with Avogadro's number, you can also find out how many atoms there are 
in a given element or in a given molecule. And so we can use Avogadro just like we do moles of an element to get moles of molecules. So in this example, we know that one mole, uh, we have, um, if you have grams of CO2 and you're trying to figure out how many atoms of CO2, then you're going to multiply it by grams per mole, but you're going to have to flip it because you got to get rid of the grams. And then you get rid of the moles and you're left with molecules. Okay, so it's exactly the same calculation as we saw before, except instead of atoms, we're using Avogadro to find out how many molecules there are. So for any of you aspiring nurses or doctors, here's one um, that kind of um, speaks to you. An aspirin tablet contains 325 milligrams of acetylsalicylic acid, which is C9H8O4. How many acetylsalicylic acid molecules does it contain? Okay, well, we know we only have one number to start with, right? And that's what we can measure or hold in our hands. So we know that's what we're going to start with. And we're going to use dimensional analysis to guide us through this calculation. So we have 325 milligrams. I'm just going to write AC, okay, because there's way too much to write, all right? I'm going to need to get rid of milligrams because it's going to be my first thing because all of my numbers are in grams in the molar stuff, right? So I need to remember that there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram of the acetosalicylic acid. Then, so I got rid of milligrams. Now I'm going to get rid of grams. All right. And I know that the relationship, if you remember the mole hill I showed you, the relationship between moles and grams is going to be the formula weight or molecular weight. So I'm going to have to figure out what that is. So the formula weight of C9 H8 O4 is going to be 9 times 12, 8 times 1, and 4 times 16. All right, so I think that's 108, right? And that's eight. So twenty-four forty-four. No, that didn't look right. I know it's eight one hundred and eighty. <laughs> Let me get my calculator. You should already be doing this, right? I think I messed up on that first one. Nine times twelve. One oh eight, eight, and then sixteen times four equals sixty-four. That's where I messed up. That's what I get for trying to do it in my head, right? Okay, so that means it's 180 grams per mole of the molecule acetosalicylic acid. So I'm going to put 180 grams is in one mole. It's important you remember that that is the relationship because if you want things to cancel, you got to have that mole in there. So then that gets rid of grams of acetosalicylic acid. Well, moles of acetosalicylic acid is not what I want. I want what? Molecules. And I know the way I go between moles and molecules, so get rid of moles, I'm going to use Avogadro. Okay, now when I do that calculation, because I got rid of moles, I'm left with molecules. And it's molecules because the C9H804 is a molecule, okay? And so I, then I put that in my calculator, and, I, and as I say, pause this, see what number you get to make sure, oh, that's a thousand. It didn't pick up my zero, sorry about that. Um, make sure that your calculator, see what you get, okay, what I got, was 1.09 times 10 to the 21st molecules of acetosalicylic acid. 
So make sure, as I said, you know, your calculator can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So make sure you work through these and repeat it if you need to, okay? Then I gave you a couple of things. I, I didn't want to, you know, be play favoritism with aspirin, so I'm giving you one with ibuprofen as well. Um, and then you have another um, one where you go back from um, molecules to mass. It's just the same way you still use those uh, conversion factors to just take you right through it. Okay? All right. And so that is converting moles to molecules and doing molar mass.